Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com and today we're going to work on equivalent fractions. Uh, it's a very important concept. Actually, I can't stress how important this concept is because up until now with our discussion of fractions, we've talked about mostly what fractions are, what they represent, um, and how do we take a sketch of a fraction, like a pie or a cake, and turn it into something that we can write in terms of math, like a, like a fraction that we write on the board, okay? Now, in this section, we're going to do something extremely important, and that is we're going to show you that two different fractions, even though they look different, can actually represent the same thing. And that is so important because a lot of students will look at a fraction and then look at another fraction that looks different when you write it down, but be completely confused as to how they can represent the same thing. But in fact, that is one of the things about fractions that you have to understand. So the, the way that we get there is one thing I want to teach you now before you write anything down. And it's very important. That is that, and I want you to remember this, when you have a fraction, remember there's a numerator on the top and the denominator on the bottom. Um, whenever you have a fraction, you can multiply that fraction by anything you want, any number you want, as long as you multiply the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by the same number. All right, so if you want to multiply the top of the fraction by 4, that's okay, as long as you multiply the bottom of the fraction by 4 also. You can multiply the top of the fraction by 16 if you want to, uh, but uh, the only thing is you have to make sure and multiply the bottom of that fraction by 16 as well. So when you do that, you keep the fraction in balance, and that's how you make them and see that they're equivalent. So let's do an example to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's draw a picture of the most famous fraction of them all. Here's our pie, and here we've cut it exactly into two pieces. So let me go ahead and shade this guy. If this is the amount of pie that we actually have, what fraction do you think we have? Well, we have two pieces in a uh, total, and I only have one of these two pieces. So this is one half. This is the most famous fraction of all, right? Half a pizza, half a pot, half of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or whatever. All right, so let me, let me show you something. What I can do is I can put an equal sign here, and I can take, I told you, I can take the top and bottom of this fraction, and I can multiply it by anything I want, as long as I do it to the top and also to the bottom. So I can rewrite my one half, and I'll just make a longer little fraction bar here. And I can multiply the top of this fraction by the number two. But if I do that, I just have to make sure that I can also multiply the bottom of my fraction also by two. That's very, very important for you to understand. I can multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And if I do that, I'll change to another color here. What will I, what will I get? One times two is two and two times two is four. Now this is absolutely crucial that you understand. When I do this here, when I multiply the top and the bottom by a number, then even though it makes the fraction look different in the end, it's exactly equal to the fraction that we started with. So that's something that you have to get used to seeing. Two fractions can be the same thing, but they just might look different. In other words, two out of four pieces of a pizza is the same thing as one out of two pieces of a pizza. And to show you that, let's go ahead and draw this second fraction over here to take a look at it. So if we have this guy right here is our pizza. But see, now we're not chopping it into two pieces like before. We're actually chopping it into 